In this video, I sat down with Rasmus, the founder of Stardust, a lovable built ad analysis platform that hit 500,000 euros in ARR 8 days after launching, and has raised 1.7 million in pre-seed funding. But the interesting part is that we filmed this before any of this happens, so you will be able to hear his thought process in real time while he's selling to 20 customers, go to market strategy and some advice for founders building with AI. I'm here with Rasmus who built a company that has over 100,000 ARR before they even began building the product. Uh, Rasmus, tell me your, your story. So I studied five years at Stockholm School of Economics. So basically business management economics. And quite rapidly after I started studying, got a business idea. There was an app for study technique, but I didn't know how to code. I had two friends I played basketball with, which I knew they could code. So that's how our first company was born. It was a study app for, for high school students, which taught them how to study using scientifically proven study techniques. But we realized pretty soon that we built it all wrong from the get-go. So we didn't realize that 90% of the tuition market was connected to math and STEM fields, not for social science, which our app was built for. Besides building the startup, we also did consultants. So we bootstrapped it and that thing went really well. So we started selling our IT services to companies. Since we had built this app using study technique, we were really good at teaching people in efficient ways how to code. And at the same time, we started posting on TikTok about what we're doing. We're just documenting and we quite rapidly grew to 200,000 followers on TikTok. More and more people started asking us, can't you teach us as well? So we started a, a coding bootcamp. It went great, it was really fun. But how we got our customers to this bootcamp was using paid ads. And at the end of last year, that is 2024, we realized that Lovable is going to outcompete us. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you don't have to learn no code. <laughs> Maybe now it's good if you want to at least build some more advanced stuff. In a very short while, you don't even have to know that. You can just prompt your way there. Then this Lovable hackathon came up. We thought to ourselves, okay, but just let's sign up and, and see what happens. The next question became, okay, so what should we, what should we build? And the thing is that how we got our customers to this coding bootcamp was using paid ads. <laughs> we experienced a lot of different problems with the paid ad side of acquiring customers. So we thought to ourselves, why not just solve our own problem? So we did that. We actually won the hackathon. Did you have time to build out like some of the core uh, features of Stardust? We had 24 hours in the, in the hackathon to do this. So yeah. <laughs> we, we, we picked a, a small segment of the app that we felt this is the the part that's most easily understood by non-marketing people. So we built that, a, a prototype for that. And what does Stardust do today? It watches your ads like a human. It thinks strategically and then it tells you what to launch next and why it will work. In 2019, TikTok revolutionized social media. It introduced the interest-based algorithm. So before, in the old world, targeting was made in the ads manager. You could say, I want this ad to be shown to, to this kind of people. This age range, this location, this interest, and stuff like that. That doesn't work anymore. Now, in the new world, targeting is made in the creative. So the algorithm only pushes ads that resonate with your target audience. The day your target have to stop scrolling to look at your ad, it must feel like it's not an ad. So, and this is a huge problem for marketers today. There's so many data points. You can actually go down to a pixel level. It's no human can do that. Maybe you can do it for one or two or three ads, but doing that for thousands of ads at the same time, from your ads, your competitor ads on the industry level, it's impossible. With AI and Stardust, now you can do it. So you're using AI to analyze uh, these videos, right? Or how does it work? So basically you install Stardust. So you connect your ad account to Stardust, and then Stardust gets to work. It fetches all of your ads you've ever run, and then it watches the ads, what's the background, what type of person, how many seconds into the video they present the product. And all of this, it creates millions of data points. And it then it looks at what are the common denominators for us that do work well, but also for us that doesn't work as well. And then it creates what we call your ad DNA. And that ad DNA becomes the genetic code that makes your ads perform. So Stardust actually takes all of these millions of data points in mind and then serves your decisions. And right now, how, how many companies are, are you kind of working with right now? So we pre-sold 20 customers before even starting building this. And then after 20, we closed the doors. How did you reach out to these companies? 
Or what was kind of the pitch? For us, it was really important to validate this thoroughly. And we wanted to validate it on three levels. First of all, we wanted to know, is this problem worth solving for our, our potential customers? Because we had the problem ourselves, but that doesn't mean that other people have had it. We also wanted to, to validate, are, is it such a big problem that companies are willing to give up their contact information in order to join a waitlist? And given that they do that, are they willing to pay? So we set out to validate these three steps. So what we did was that we built a simple landing page using Lovable. In that landing page, we also built a micro version of a lead magnet. We promised that brands who were interested in what uh, the problem we were solving would get a small benefit from giving us their information. So we, so we started collecting a huge wait list. And then we started calling these companies up just to try to understand like what are they, their problems. And we learned a lot, especially we could refine our ICP, ideal customer profiles. So, but we found that and the companies that we were talking to who matched our ICP, we scheduled a, a sales call. And between the time from our telephone call to, to the sales of the videos online call, we built a down prototype in Lovable and uh, just made a loom. And then we sent them to these people and then uh, uh, we had a, a call with them and we closed 93% of them. Wow. And also we could sell at least 20 of them to pay six months upfront for something that didn't exist. Just a promise that we will solve this problem. All the information about the product, we purposefully tried to cover in, in the Loom video. What we did on the sales call was we sold them on the transformation of becoming an, what we call them, OG. That meant an identity shift that they wanted to contribute to this, this new revolution in the, in the industry. And we sold them on their new identity. Well, then obviously, in order to pay six months up front, we also said that once you get the, the software, 30 day money back guarantee. And from those 20 customers, did you reach 100,000 ever in ERR from those 20? Yes. Wow. So how much is, is one customer then? 500 euros a month. So we collected 50,000 euros up front and then it renews in six months uh, mm. from when they signed up. And I've heard you guys are racing around as well, or is that private maybe? No, we're, no? we're, we're going to start raising in, in August. And, and when is the product being, being released for, for kind of everyone? Or right now, I guess you're getting feedback from your customers, adjusting the product, or how does the process look like right now? The thing is that we're in the marketing tech, which is both good and bad. In marketing tech, it's all about ROI. It's very easy to sell, but it's very hard to keep customers actually satisfied because it's a hard promise to, to fulfill. So right now we're working very, very hard with our customers to make the product better, make them experience the ROI and also documenting that for also investors. Is there any learnings that you have taken away while building the products and while like validating the idea? First of all, you need to have packaging. I think a lot of AI startups, they are packaging their, their offer as an, uh, an improvement offer, that this will make it faster, smarter, better, something that ends with er. Mm. Nobody wants something, something, an improvement. And they want something new, a new way to think about, a new way to work. Mm. So you have to give them a, a new opportunity, package it that way. If you want to read more upon that, I highly recommend looking at Russell Brunson. So that's the first core pillar. And the second one is a lead magnet. A lead magnet is a complete solution to a narrowly defined problem. Whatever you're building, that you're offering some kind of value to the world, you Try to divide it in what are the different steps some a customer needs to go through in order to get the, the final outcome or the final transformation. And then you take first one, two, or maybe even three steps in that journey and then solve it completely for them for free. If you want to know more about that, I highly recommend Alex Hermosi. And the third pillar is distribution. If you know your ICP, where do they hang out? And then reach out to the person who owns that space that your ICP hangs out. If you're good, then you'll probably strike a deal with that person. In that way, you can get so much more high quality distribution than doing it all by yourself from, from the get-go. If someone is uh, building an app on their own or some sort of service, um, how should they think about selling and marketing? And start with some kind of customer segment that is easier to, to get hold of and that have higher decision power. So we're trying to focus on the smaller companies, at least in the beginning, that is easier to target, basically. As a salesperson, you have three jobs. First of all, ask questions. So you actually know what kind of pains they are experiencing. The second job is to rephrase their answers back to them in a slightly different way so they feel understood. And the third job is to tell stories in order to break false beliefs. 
So if I'm selling you, my job is not to convince you to buy. Yeah. My job is to make you realize that you have to buy. When it comes to ads generally, uh, let's say I'm building like an app uh, with Lavabo and I want to sell directly to customers, to consumers. What are some tips that you have there? There's four ways. The first one is one-to-one -to, -one to people who know you. Calling them, emailing them, people you know in your network. The other way is one-to-many. That's your, your followers, your larger extent network. The third way is one-on-one -on -one to people who don't know you. That's cold outbound. Email campaigns, cold calling and stuff like that. And the fourth way is one-to-many to people who don't know you. That's paid ads. All of them can work. They have different pros and cons. But I would recommend in the beginning, start with something that you feel quite comfortable with, given your earlier experiences and try to only focus on one of them and do it. And Alex Armuse has a book on this. It's called 100 Million Dollar Leads. I highly recommend reading that if, if you're having a product built that, that you're trying to advertise. How does one go about learning these skills, would you say? Like, let's say the viewer is watching this and wants to start doing something on their own. I, I would say there's two ways of doing this. If you don't have any money, take a job. Try to work for free for someone you, you might think that they will actually be able to teach you a lot of these skills and like see them from a day-to-day -day basis like what are they doing why are they doing that trying to understand alternatively if you have a good idea and you're very tech savvy don't really good at the, the sailing marketing and distribution parts i would highly encourage you to find a, a co-founder that's good in those areas that can actually complement you if you have money then you i would probably pay someone who is really really good at this either to hire them or maybe even better, hire them uh, to teach you. What are the biggest challenges that came your way when building this company? Prioritization. There's a definition of strategy that I really like. Strategy is how you allocate limited resources against unlimited opportunities. What's actually the few things that actually matter at the end of the day? First of all, having the ability to prioritize what do we need to do. The second one is having the consistency and the discipline to actually only do those few things that actually matter and probably won't be the, the most fun parts but that's probably the thing that will make you successful. your product is entirely built by lovable is that correct we use lovable for a lot of the front end stuff and cursor for a lot of the back end stuff did you come across any challenges while building out the product what we're doing from a technical standpoint is very very hard especially when working with external apis i think with tools like, like uh, AI enabling coding, the hard part isn't building your, your own code. It's solving problems in a good way, especially when you're, uh, if you have external uh, endpoints that you need to, to adjust. Okay, but going forward, what is the vision for Stardust? So what we want to build Stardust for is to become a promptless AI for your ads. So we want it to be able to analyze millions of creatives, ads, social media trends, and have that just in a vector database. We want it to think for you. We want it to basically, you, you install Stardust and then you just leave it. You never look at it, it tells you what, what to do. The next phase is, it tells you what it did. Phase after that, it just tells you the outcome. You can ask it for anything, scripts, hooks, uh, different A-B test versions. What do you think about AI? Like people have been describing the AI revolution as the, the next industri industrial revolution. Yeah. So before that you could have like Isas who had this very complex code base and it required a lot of time and capital to, to build. And that was kind of your competitive advantage. That's, that will disappear. Now it's distribution, community, because you can have uh, thousands of thousands of loyal of customers, but if somebody else builds a better movement that they actually relate to more then they might might as well leave how can you keep customers staying loyal how can you help them frame as an identity shift mm. how can they identify as a lovable developer i think this was a great interview uh, if you want to follow rasmus and stardust uh, the, their tags and the linkedin's and x will pop up on the screen right now they're also linked in the description and if you're a company looking to optimize your ads uh, which I mean all companies should, I think, then you can just check out Stardust as well, uh, meet stardust.ai, and you can give it a try. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for coming.